If you're relatively new to hiking and spending time in the outdoors, then this video is for you. I started hiking as a way to shoot photos and videos. Wearing sneakers, carrying a regular camera backpack, probably not carrying enough food and water, using my phone flashlight if it got dark, not super prepared or knowledgeable about the elements. But over the last several years of doing this, I've added a whole array of items to my hiking bag that have proven incredibly useful on the trail. And today I wanna to share all of those items with you in hopes of giving you some insight for your own kit, maybe some ideas for items that you don't have that you should add. Some of these offer convenience and comfort and others could quite possibly save your life. And honestly, when I look back at the past several years of hiking, I kind of grimace at the fact that I wasn't carrying some of this stuff with me on the trail. Also, I am by no means an expert on this and I don't want to imply that this is a complete comprehensive hiking kit and I would love to hear from you. So go ahead, chime in in the comments with some gear that you're carrying, anything I left out, and I will pin any comments that are particularly useful that add, you know, some extra insight. Okay, we're starting out pretty simple here, but you got to have good clothing. And this is completely different depending on where you're going, what you're doing, but here are a few of my favorites and a few kind of important ones to think about. Anytime you're out hiking in the cold, having a thermal base layer works wonders. This one I got from REI. There's some pants that go with it too. It's basically just long johns for your entire body. You're also gonna wanna have a good warm winter jacket. Now, I'm a big fan of the puffer jacket. It folds down really small. You can kind of bunch it into a little ball and squish it into your bag. It's super light, doesn't take up much space but still keeps you really warm. This one I got from Fjall Raven, but there are plenty of other great puffs out there. REI, Patagonia, The North Face, pretty much every outdoorsy company has a good puff. I've noticed that a lot of photographers and filmmakers go out hiking and don't carry any gloves, which can absolutely bite you if it gets unexpectedly cold. So carry a good pair of gloves in your bag. These ones I got from The North Face a couple years ago. They're nice touchscreen gloves, so I can still use all the buttons and the screen on my phone, as well as my camera. Camera. One piece of clothing that it took me an embarrassingly long time to pick up is just a good pair of hiking pants. Mine are these hiking joggers from REI. They're lightweight, comfortable, relatively warm in the winter and nice and cool in the summer. Regardless, don't go hiking in like jeans or sweatpants. You'll get sweaty and uncomfortable, really hot. And you can even get like chafing on your legs if you're doing a long hike in like tighter jeans or sweatpants, which is just an incredibly unpleasant experience. Get some good hiking pants. And last but not least, a good pair of hiking boots or hiking shoes. They have backpacking boots, hiking boots, trail runners. There are a bunch of different options out there. Having something waterproof is nice. These are from Sportiva. They've been great over the past couple of years, but there are a gazillion different options out there. Just something that's not like your Vans. In addition to a good pair of hiking boots, if you're out in the winter, consider some micro spikes to go over those boots. When you're out hiking in the winter, you never know when you're gonna run into a nice big patch of ice on the trail. And these are just kind of spiky little chains that strap onto the bottom of your boots to give you more grip. And if you don't have these, chances are you won't make it very far on that ice. Also pick up a nice little headlamp. If you're doing sunrise and sunset hikes, you need a light source. And a headlamp is just better than a flashlight, especially better than your phone flashlight, because it's usually brighter for one, but it's also, you know, stuck to your head. This one is from BioLite. It's super bright, it's rechargeable, and it's also really small. It just slips into like this hip pocket on the side of my bag. And finally, if you're out doing longer hikes, spending an entire day hiking or even multiple days, consider picking up some trekking poles. I know people knock on these a bit. They have like kind of a try hard hiker connotation, but if you're doing a long hike, they really do make a world of a difference. You can go a lot faster on steep terrain, especially cover a lot more distance and not get tired nearly as quickly. These ones I picked up from REI, they're carbon fiber, so they're super light. They also collapse down really small and just fit into this like side pocket on my bag next to my camera tripod. But once again, there are a ton of different options out there 
tons of companies make these and they all do more or less the same thing. If you're doing a long hike, especially one that might not have very many or might not even have any water sources like this creek behind me, you're gonna wanna carry a lot of water on you. Lately, I've been carrying around this gigantic REI water bottle. I think it's like 50 ounces, something absurd. Running out of water, you're gonna slow down quickly. If you're on a trail that does have water sources like a river or a lake, then carrying a water filter is ridiculously handy. This is the one that I've been carrying lately just because it's really small, kind of just rolls up and fits into a pocket on my bag. But there are plenty of other options out there. There's the Grail filter, which is a little larger, but you can also use it as a water bottle. And there's also the Camelback water bottles that have life straw filters built into them. So it has a straw and as you drink out of it, it just filters the water. Regardless, these are super helpful for a day hike and honestly pretty much a necessity if you're spending multiple days hiking and camping. And if I'm spending multiple days hiking and camping, then I'll carry these dehydrated backpacking meals. You just boil some water, pour it in, and they kind of come back to life and it's like pretty close to actual human food. There are several companies that make these, my favorite being Backpacker's Pantry. These are really compact, you just squish them into your bag and they're super high in calories, super high in protein. They're gonna keep you alive and keep you going on a multi-day hike. All right, let's talk about some stuff that will keep you alive. Starting with navigation, which is pretty important if you're in the middle of nowhere. For most of my navigation, I use an app on my phone called All Trails, so I can download the map of the trail that I'm gonna be on, have an offline map, so even if there's no service, I can just use this map on my phone and make sure that I'm still on the trail. I can also use it to make my own maps if I'm going somewhere a little more remote or obscure, doing a more complex route that isn't already available online. This is really convenient, but you should also have some kind of offline option just in case your phone battery dies or you drop your phone in a lake or something, have like a paper map that you can read or a GPS. Speaking of having a GPS, for the last several months, I've been carrying this satellite phone. So this allows you to navigate on the trail, send and receive messages, or even call for a rescue if you get into a real pickle. And all of that using satellites. You don't need a cell signal, you just need a clear view of the sky. Speaking of stuff that can really help out if you get yourself in some trouble, you should always have a first aid kit in your hiking bag. And let me tell you a little story about this. So back in May, I was doing a hike in Hawaii to shoot a video, and I was flying my drone at the top of this nine mile climb, landed it, reached out to catch it, and the propeller chomped off a little bit of my finger, took a chunk out of my pinky. I'm on top of a mountain, bleeding all over my camera with a decent open wound, and getting back down to the car means descending four and a half miles of mud and ropes. So had I not been able to whip out this tiny little first aid kit, clean and bandage the hell out of my messed up finger, I don't know, I, I would have been pretty hosed. So carry a first aid kit. You can get a small one like this that fits easily into your bag, doesn't weigh much, and has everything you need. And while we're on the topic, grab a bit of moleskin too. If you're spending multiple days hiking, you're probably gonna get some blisters. Have some moleskin in your bag to slap on those so that you can ease the pain and make sure they don't get worse. And finally, the actual bag that you put all this stuff in can make a huge difference as well. Good backpacking bags usually have a metal frame on the back, which evenly distributes the weight across your back and makes it a lot more comfortable to carry. I know having a metal frame on your back doesn't sound comfortable at all, but I swear to God, it makes a world of a difference. And it's also great to have a bag with a hip belt, like the clip that goes around your waist. That takes a lot of the weight off of your shoulders and back and also just distributes that weight more comfortably. This bag that I use is the Mountain Light Bag by Moment, but there are a lot of different backpacking bags out there. I use this one because it's a backpacking bag with a camera insert. All right, again, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what's in your kit, anything I might have left out. But more importantly, before you go, we need to get something straight. So listen up. When you tally all of this up, it gets expensive. This stuff can be a lot of money. You don't need all of this to go hiking. For your average day hike nearby, a lot of this is probably overkill. If you're spending multiple days in the backcountry without service, hiking long distances, or if you're hiking in winter weather, then you need to take precautions. 
But if you don't have the necessary gear, there's still plenty of stuff that you can do. So if you're starting out and don't have most of this stuff, just start small and work your way up to the more intense trips as you acquire more of the necessary gear. And make sure to enjoy it along the way. I'll see you in a couple weeks.